So did Euphoria almost make me feel sympathy for Nate? What's going on? <laughs> What's up, everyone? Make sure that you're going over to patreon.com slash Adrian Expression and signing up. We will be holding some voting on the types of content that I'll release this week, so you will not want to miss that. Extras, early content, go on over there and check it out. Now, I was going to just talk about Euphoria really quickly in one of my, you know, regular style videos, but I was just like, nah, the way that these actors performed on this, uh, throughout the whole season, which is why I'm going to talk about the whole season and the finale in, this, in the same video, the way that they performed so well, the the cinematography of this show, the writing on this show, the, the dialogue, I just, it deserves this whole, uh, a whole video of me just ranting and raving and standing about it. <laughs> so I wanted to start with my overall thoughts about the season when it comes to specific issues. And of course, we'll get to the finale. I'm gonna be switching back and forth. I don't even know why I'm playing. Y'all already know how my brain is just all over the place. So let's just start. <laughs> I absolutely love how they handled Jewel's character. Um, she's a trans character, but it wasn't, her transness was not this cheap, um, caricature focal point bullshit. They created a complex character whose decisions you agreed with one day, disagreed with the next day. A human being, someone with emotion, someone, a real person. I know that the LGBT community really appreciates it. And from what I'm seeing, the trans community specifically, the cinematography of this show, I cannot stress it enough, is just mind blowing. And I know the show is, you know, euphoria, it's about drugs and stuff. It's supposed to look a little trippy. Um, I, but I, like the way that the cinematography coincides Sided so specifically with the themes and with the emotions of what the characters was going through. I just, it was like, I will always reference that scene where Rue and Jules were kissing in the bed and the, the camera was just, just spinning around, just showing different moments of their lives. It was just so amazing. And if we're talking about the finale specifically, that whole uh, montage with that played over a song for you, I'll talk about it a little bit later. It's just the song, the soundtrack is so amazing. I was listening to it earlier before I started recording the video and I would definitely talk about Miss Zendaya completely snatching my edges at the end of the, the finale. I was like, what the hell's going on? I just, oh, the flick the flavor, the power that that has. It jumped out. As uncomfortable as some of the scenes were to watch sometimes, I'm glad that they were uncomfortable. I'm glad that they didn't sugarcoat a lot of this shit. Like, of course, for TV, you do have to, when it comes to TV, you got to make it a little bit consumable, you know what I mean? But for the most part, they did not sugarcoat this shit. They let y'all see the grittiness of addiction. They let y'all see how people the mindsets of people who are addicted, they let you see, um, and, and especially when it comes to mental health, I wrote about this on Patreon, I absolutely love that episode when Rue was over there, couldn't, he, couldn't even get out of her bed, knowing she had to urinate, knowing the good sis had to go ahead and take a piss, she could not get out of bed, her room was a mess, I talked about this on Patreon already, her room was a mess, hair was a mess, I know her ass wasn't showering, and I, like I said, a lot of times people think that this anxiety and depression and shit, and she was, she was searching her her, uh, am I bipolar on Google and shit. It's just so relatable. But like I said, a lot of people think that this anxiety, depression, bipolar shit, uh, mental illness is just this quirky, mean type shit. Like you, you see all these social media posts, hot takes from people who clearly do not suffer from these mental, from these mental illnesses. It's just like, why are y'all trying to make this into some like trend? Like it's a bracelet or something like a hottest fashion trend or something. It's literally depression, girl. Why? Like, why are you trying to glamorize it? You see what I'm saying? Now that's one of the issues that I had with 13 Reasons Why, I felt like it came from a different place than Euphoria is coming from. Euphoria is like, girl, yeah, we had good moments, but we also had bad moments, and you might think that some of the shit is fun and cool, and we see y'all while y'all having fun and doing what y'all want to do, but at the end of the day, there are also repercussions that come with it. It showed also how the decisions that Rue was making, that it, all these characters were making, affected the lives of their family, and I don't know what's going on with 13 Reasons Why right now, because I'm not watching the show, but you know, when I first watched it, it felt really empty, it felt really dangerous, and, and even experts were saying that the show was dangerous, but in my opinion, Euphoria comes at this from a completely different angle, and it's it just feels real. It feels more real. If we're talking about the season finale specifically, there's, like, <laughs> where do I even begin? Let's begin with Nate. Let me talk about Nate. So, Nate was really dragging Rue um, at that one scene, I, I guess, guess they were at some 
some dance. I don't know if it was prom, but it was a school dance. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. I know y'all gonna be about to drag me. But when Nate was standing, I mean, Nate really tries to present himself as this person who just got it all figured out. He got, he's a conniving ass motherfucker. Don't cross him. But you know, so that scene, first of all, my mind is all over the place. I'm so sorry. But first of all, these actors, I know I said it already. Zendaya, during that scene, especially specifically, I can't, you forget that these actors are either doing this shit to a camera or they're doing it to somebody. It's not real, you know what I mean? It's, obviously it's not real, but the way that when Nate said that thing specifically about, oh, well, Jules is gonna forget about your dumb ass anyway. Um, and, and just the way Zendaya's face was just like, it looked like it stung her. And I know that's what you're supposed to do as an actor, I know that, but it's just, <laughs> it's so surreal to watch that talent just jump out of sin. All the actors on the show, honestly, were really, really amazing. Like, and that's an understatement to me, sis. I, I don't know if it's just if it's just because all this shit is really triggering, <laughs> and you know you relive in some high school trauma, and that's why I connect with it so much. But it, the, the actors are so amazing. Nate came in there, and so now I want some opinions about what happened with Nate and and that breakdown in his father. Um, when I first watched it, Nate was in, in his underwear, and they were real close to each other. It was like they were fighting, but there's also something else was gonna happen. When I watched that, I was like. Okay, is is he some, is he being is he about to be molested? That that's basically what I thought. The way that Nate reacted, it seemed like either he thought he was gonna get molested, he had been being touched before, and he he's not feeling that. Or, and I was reading somewhere, or he could have felt like in that moment when they're about to fight and, and his dad subdued him, he could have felt like all those girls in his dad's porn videos and shit that he records of himself. He could have felt powerless and helpless. And it's something that they both identified in that moment. And that's why his dad backed away from him and didn't bother him anymore and went to his room. And Nate had to break, had, had a full on breakdown. So I want to know your opinion on that specifically. And if we're still going to be talking about Nate, Nate and Maddie were at the dance and trying to make each other jealous like they, they were in middle school, like petty ass elementary schoolers it was just so ridiculous to watch I was like y'all are horrendous y'all are bad for each other and you y'all don't need to be together and then at the near the end of the episode that they they said that to each other exactly that they're like you know that we do not belong in this you you know that we're we are horrible for each other and they both were like I know I know but they can't get away from each other so you know season two has already been I think that it's already been renewed so I, I really want them to dive deeper into those types of relationship dynamics, those abusive dynamics when it comes to relationships. Because even while those girls were sitting and watching them do this, like at the dance, they were watching them. Um, Kat, was it Kat who said it? I'm not sure if it was Kat. But someone said, you know, I know that they're gonna end up married. And in some weird, twisted way, they'll be happy. But I just, they'll destroy, if they continue like that, they will destroy each other. And it will be most likely Nate who will really hurt, because she's already physically hurt Maddie, but really, really fucking yeah, Miss Nate, girl, I don't know what you got going on, but sis, sis needs some therapy. We all do, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all need therapy, but sis, like, she needs to make sure they really got to get his mental health together for real. I am so happy that Kat finally went to Ethan and just said, look, I'm sorry. Like, girl, because that was really, it would, I understand that Kat, and I loved it when Kat find, found her voice and her identity and wasn't going to allow anybody else to shit on her. I, like, I love that, but she was really, she knew she was wrong for what she did to Ethan, and I'm glad she finally went to him said I'm sorry, apologized, and they had this cute kiss. I think BTS's Euphoria was playing in the background, which I thought was cute. Um, they had this cute kiss, and that was that. I was like, oh my gosh, finally. Like, Ethan was, Ethan ain't did nothing to you, says. All Ethan wanted was a, some TLC, some kind of love and care, girl. So we had this whole thing with Cassie going over there having this abortion, and I loved that they really highlighted how awkward and weird it was for people to be asking you all these questions, all this doctor be all up in your face. Cassie seemed to have really mixed feelings about this. Like she knew she wasn't the right time, but at the same time, she she even told her boyfriend, like, I, I can, a girl can dream. Like basically, if her life looked different, she would have she would have wanted to keep it. It seemed like, in my opinion, y'all can tell me if you view it differently, but I. I think that if, if her life looked a little, little differently that she would have wanted to keep it but especially when the, the person at the front desk or whatever that was asked her girl do you have any second thoughts are you good and her face which I will again commend all these actors and actresses for being so amazing because she's doing that directly in front of a camera it seemed like she wanted to say yeah girl I don't want to I, I really don't want to do this but I know I have to so she ended up going through it I like that they showed the process even when it was done and her mother looked at her and asked her how do you feel and she said she feels better it didn't even look 
look like she did, for real. Like I said, I love the realness of the show. Abortions can be so complicated and emotional and expensive. It's already difficult to go through that process. And then for, for y'all misogynists to make it legally, make it even more difficult, is it's preposterous. So I'm glad that they showed that. All right, so let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. If anything happens to my good sis fans, you hear what I'm saying? I'm gonna fight. I don't know what militia I have to start. We're going to go after Mouse. That's on that's on impeachment. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're going after Mouse. And then, and then I don't care if he's got the backing of D Disney with this Mickey Mouse shaped head ass. Uh, we're going, hey, girls, Adrian Army, I already got Adrian Army. We're going after Mouse. If anything happens to Faz, do you, listen to what I'm saying. I think they left us on a cliffhanger, right? Because Faz was just like, girl, we good. What's the tea? That's what he said, basically. I'm gay paraphrasing. He said, girl, what's the tea, honey? Uh, sweetie, are we good, honey? Girl, you know what I mean? And Mouse was just like, so we don't really know what happened. All we know is that Faz was over here beating some CEO up for the cash. He put all types of pills in the coffee table, and I, I don't know what's going on. Um, it was blood on the money when that when he gave it back. Cause remember, Faz got raided, and he was like, "Girl, we gotta find a way to make this money back." Cause Mouse is gonna literally kill my ass. <laughs> just, that's it. So he did what he had to do, and I need for Mouse to just sit his ass on down. He will be renamed Rat. If he keeps if he keeps fucking around with Faz, that's just that's just on period. So going back to Rue and Jules, I love their connection, even though it is just so it can be really tumultuous at times and probably dependent if we're talking specifically about Rue. They were over here giving all types of middle fingers to Nate while they were on the dance floor. It was really cute. Then they went outside and, and Rue asked Jules, like, girl, do you love? Um, that one girl that you was over here fucking around with, Miss Alicia Keys, and she was like, yes, girl, I do. And then Ru asked her, do you love, are you in love with me? And she was like, yes, girl, I am. I was like, okay, what's, you know, what's what's going on? That she's just very confused. I'm like, is Jules Polly, is, is Jules really Polly? Is that what they're trying to say? I really would have wondered how that would have worked. They had this whole scene in one of those meetings and Rue's mama went up there and she was reading this, reading something that she wrote. I guess she was asked to write about what, what Rue cost the family. And it was, like I said earlier, it was put over um, a song for you. And it's just it's crazy fight between Rue and her mom. And, and, the, and her little sister was in the middle trying to uh, mediate, but oh my goodness, I, the rawness of that, it makes you want to, it makes you want to start crying. It really does. The mother was just so frustrated with, with Rue, not understanding what was going on, I think, but also the fact that her ass was all over the place and on drugs and Rue was just not knowing how to deal with herself mentally. And so that's, it's just, it was just a clash. And then you find out that the sweater that she was always wearing was her, was her father's who died. And I'm just like, y'all are trying to y'all are trying to make me see the light today that's what y'all trying to do one of the most important scenes of the whole series of the whole episode was that was when they were just when Jules and Rue was just like okay we're gonna just leave town we're just gonna I'm just like where the fuck y'all going y'all are high school y'all like what are y'all doing what and that's what it was in my head like it was a cute love story type of shit like oh let's run run away with me type of shit until y'all go hungry it's just like what, what you know it was cute it was cute in the moment but you know that's what I thought but as she was walking towards the train I was like sis I don't know about this and that's exactly what Ruth's face was it's like girl I, 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 I think we should turn our ass around that's what she said to Jules and Jules was like don't girl come on come on we got it and Ruth was like nah I done done some dumb shit in the past and I know now I know this shit this shit, this shit don't sound good <laughs> like this shit don't look good we, we need to turn our ass around and Jules was not hearing it she was not hearing it and Jules was like come on I love you I love you for me Jules uh, that was like that was a little fucked up Jules like you know what you know what was going on and since was telling you she was uncomfortable she been through all types of rehab she been wearing her family members and her friends and Rue did the right Rue ended up I was like please don't go I know that you want to and I, I, I know like it just crushes her soul not to be able to oh my goodness my voice shaking even think about it but she made a good decision she decided not to go she let her leave she let her, and I was like oh my god thank you so much much. She had to end up letting sis go. Man, she was just sobbing on the way home. Sobbing. I'm like, oh, girl. Her world was crushed. Now, at the very end of this, I was a little bit confused because I saw her mouth moving. It was just, she she was sleeping on his bed and got up and shit. I was like, what's going on? It was a whole ass music video at the end of this. I was like, are you serious? I was like, I, Zendaya was over here singing on that song with Labyrinth, All For Us. It was amazing. It was an amazing visual as well. Now, what I think it means, I've been reading, but what I think it means is that Sis OD, you know, and, and as beautiful as it was, it was also, it was tragic. Sis was over here knocking shit over in her house and just, just completely uncoordinated because her heart just, just smashed into pieces. She'd been through a lot. 
And it, it shows like, yeah, as humans, we can make the right decisions, but sometimes we fall and sometimes we lose, sometimes we lose the battle as hard as we fight. But I think the most important part of it was her experience and her story and how it could possibly help someone who's going through the same shit that she is. But I think, in my opinion, especially when she dropped at the end of the episode, I think that sis, I think sis OD. But then I'm just like, how does that work when it comes to a second season? You see what I'm saying? It could be many things. Maybe she didn't OD, maybe she just passed out, or maybe she's incapacitated or maybe she did OD and then her family found her again and was able to get her the care that she needs and that's how we get to season two but yeah once Zendaya started singing on the track I was like oh yeah y'all are trying <laughs> y'all y'all are really doing it give Zendaya all the awards give all these actors um including the actor Nate I forget his name give give everybody all the awards they did such an amazing job the show was good as hell but yeah thank you all so much for watching make sure that you dodge Nate's punches and don't get choked by him so that we all can have a good goddamn evening.